What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be talking about a movie from my childhood that I love very dearly and that is Lilo and Stitch. Written and directed by Dean DeBlois and Chris Sanders and also starring Chris Sanders as Stitch himself, this film also stars people like Davy Chase, Tia Carrera, Ving Rhames, Kevin McDonald, David Ogden Steers, Jason Scott Lee, Kevin Michael Richardson, and so many more, and tells the story of a crazy alien creature that comes across a Hawaiian family and finds exactly that family. Hey guys, what's going on? It's been quite some time since I've done a collab review here on the channel or even a review for an older movie. I've been a little bit out of my element lately. I've been trying to keep up with the channel by at least reviewing maybe some of the early screeners that I've been sent as well as newer movie reviews. So you probably have noticed in the last few weeks that I haven't been really dropping a lot of what my channel was consistently all about, which is older movie reviews and just kind of cataloging different thoughts on movies here on the channel. And I'll get into that on another Another video I'm not gonna lie my mental health has not been the greatest I actually have a live stream that I'm hoping to get off the floor soon with a few other guests where we're gonna talk about the discouragements and ups and downs and mental health elements of doing YouTube long term and trying to make this a thing but for now we're gonna talk about a movie that I love very dearly and I'm very happy to be joined in this video by black tastic media to Jaya himself a big thanks to my friend for joining me here in this video always a pleasure to have him in a video it's been quite some time since I've done a Blacktastic collab and honestly it feels good to just be sitting here talking to the camera knowing that you guys are about to watch a Blacktastic media collaboration with me always a great time with that said though one of my favorite things about doing collabs with people in general but specifically with Blacktastic is you can always look forward to very different opinions here not always but yeah, pretty pretty frequent and especially when it comes to these Disney movies because Blacktastic didn't grow up with these movies whereas I did this is a film that I have a lot of nostalgia for and I actually have a tattoo of Stitch writing Venom on my leg. Um, yeah, I'll throw that up on the screen if I didn't already. But yeah, I I'm very happy to have Black Tastic here in this video to have two differing opinions because I definitely want to know right out of the gate, where do you guys lie on Lilo and Stitch as we get into this? So Lilo and Stitch came out in 2002 and man, I remember the commercials. I remember the marketing. I remember the toys. I remember the posters. I remember everything about this movie because at the time it came out, it became Became a phenomenon and not only would this movie be you know one and done you know big Disney movie of its time we would end up getting tons of expansions to this movie mythology and lore including multiple straight to TV or straight to video sequels as well as a TV show that was on the Disney Channel that I used to watch all the time as a kid that plays as a sequel to this movie so I think it's really awesome that Lilo and Stitch was able to spawn so much and then we have things like Stitch taking over the ride alien encounter at Disney's Magic Kingdom which was a little bit more on a, of a horror edge kind of ride initially and then ended up becoming a stitch iteration of the similar kind of ride where stitch is trying to escape you're staying in one location and it sounds like stitch is around you like he's breathing in your ear he burps around you silly things like that not the greatest experience overall but as a kid i loved doing that because i loved stitch and i really loved the animatronic for stitch in that ride but that's neither here nor there obviously stitch has expanded and there's been plenty of different movies shows and rides and merchandise around this character and I have a tattoo of him on my leg. But why is this movie special to me? Well, for me, first of all, it takes me back to my childhood and a huge part of what makes this movie great for me is it's really core central feelings about family. Now, I come from a pretty broken family in a lot of ways. I'm very happy to have a close connection to my immediate family, my mom, my dad, my sister, and some others that are in my family. But there's a lot of divisiveness in my family. But what's also great about this movie as well is it touches on the fact that we're honing in on a, a, an older sister who's now the guardian to her younger, very bratty sister. And they kind of have to find this new version of what family is. And that's something I can definitely relate with in the sense that I have plenty of people in my life that are part of my personal personally chosen family, brothers and sisters and friends that just mean the world to me that I'm closer to than a lot of my family. And you know, for me, I've really defined that as who my family is. And so it is pretty amazing to be able to watch a movie like this that's, you know, about people who have lost family and are now trying to rebuild that family dynamic with just a few of them. And then Stitch comes along and joins that family. And I really enjoy the way they go all about that. So the basic premise of this film is that you have this experiment called Experiment 626 known as 
as Stitch, or later it will become Stitch. He's this crazy over the top alien that wants to destroy everything. And the movie starts in space as we focus on a grand high council of aliens who are looking at this thing and saying, this is an abomination. And they look at the mad scientist Jumba and say, we need to get rid of this thing. We need to imprison it. We need to throw it somewhere else because this thing is going to be a menace to society and to the galaxy. Well, this thing ends up getting loose and goes to Earth. And then they end up sending out their own like bounty hunter crew to try and capture Stitch on Earth. While Stitch is on Earth, he's pretending to be a dog and ends up building this relationship with a young girl named Lilo. A young girl who's disconnected from her friends, doesn't really have a lot of friends. She's a bit bratty, but she also has a lot of trauma and turmoil over the fact that her parents are no longer around. And she's trying to build this sister relationship that almost has to be a parental kind of relationship. And on the flip side, you have her older sister, Nani, who's trying to make ends meet, trying to pay the bills, trying to work different jobs, trying to be a normal young woman, while also having to raise her young sister that she doesn't really feel fully equipped to take care of. And that's when Stitch comes in the mix and ends up causing a disaster in their life that ends up becoming a beautiful disaster as time goes on. So you have this family story going on while you also have these alien bounty hunters coming to try to find Stitch here on Earth. And then you end up sending Jumba and Pleakley, the people who were involved in creating Stitch, to go and try to capture Stitch themselves to try to lower their sentence or get out of trouble on their own. And that's the basic gist of this movie. Overall, I have a very special place in my heart for this movie. I love the old school 2D animation that Disney used to do. I wish they would do more of this. And this is actually one of those earlier films that was starting to dabble in adding 3D animation as well as 2D animation to enhance certain moments. Sometimes the 3D animation doesn't look as crisp as we see in movies that do that today. But for the most part, I think this movie still looks really good. Love the animation style. Love the look, the feel, the vibe. And I love that the film takes us to Hawaii. Another big thing too that this film did before other movies that I feel like it doesn't really get a lot of praise for is the idea of the central story really honing in on sisterly love. You know, it's not about a man coming in to save the day like a lot of old princess films or different things like that in the Disney roster. But this movie at its core is really about family and is about two sisters coming to love one another and respect one another and understand where, you know, where they are in their life now, you know? And it's crazy because Frozen would do it years later and make the whole central theme about sisters, you know, and, and this idea of family love, and obviously they really had to save one another in that movie. But I think Lilo and Stitch did it first. I think it did it first in terms of the general idea of this, like, you know, what really ends up bringing everything together is family, specifically these two sisters. So with all of that said, I have obviously more to say on this movie, but I'm going to go ahead and pass the floor over to Blacktastic Media so we can hear his thoughts and we'll get back to my thoughts in just a moment. Perez, Perez, Perez. Just when I thought I was out of the game, Perez pulls me back in. <laughs> 2002, Lilo and Stitch. First of all, I want to thank Perez for hitting me up on Instagram for another collab never ceases to surprise me. Um, I didn't see this one coming. When this joint dropped in 2002, I remember it being pretty popular. But again, not really big on Disney animated joints. But um, I just remember the film doing well and being popular. And that's it. I didn't see this movie until a few days ago on Disney+. Plus. And this film to me is like a cartoon version of Frankenstein's monster. This movie opens up in outer space on another planet. This guy's being tried for being a villain, a mad scientist who created something that was unearthly, a monster. You got aliens that look like monsters talking about you created a monster it was a trip the animation style was cool it reminded me of the old style and um, it had a little touch of like uh, that show Futurama type of uh, animation so the animation was cool and this mad scientist was put in bounds uh, jail because he created an abomination 
And what they do on this alien planet, they get rid of the abomination. They send it somewhere to be all by itself, to live until it dies alone. Well, this rock that they sent it to was Earth. And all places, Hawaii. <laughs> and um, you had a young girl who was problematic. Um, her older sister was her legal guardian. Not sure what happened to her parents. Either I missed that or I don't remember, but something happened to mom and dad. So older sister was the legal guardian of her little sister. And it was a tumultuous relationship. Yes, they loved each other, but it was bad. They were Pacific Islanders. I love the drawing of the Pacific Islanders, the dark hair, the dark skin, um, very uh, thick on the bottom, very, very lifelike. It was cool how they emulated how women of Hawaii actually are built and look. Um, this movie was a trip. I don't know if I didn't like it or liked it a little bit. The tone of this movie had me confused because the early part of the movie was energetic with the space stuff. When it got to Earth, it kind of like, the tone totally changed. The girl late for her hula dance class, being such an ass to her older sister. Uh, just weird. I didn't like nobody in this movie. I could not gravitate to any of the characters. The little girl got on my nerve. The older sister was stupid. The dude who liked her was cool, but he was dumb. The only person I liked was a guy named, I think his name was Cobra Bubbles. He was a social worker. He was a brother, bald head. And you can tell he had a very deep background that you find out later on. But he was voiced by uh, Ving Rhymes. I love that man's voice. Very intimidating, very, um, very imposing voice. He was the only character I liked in this show. Even the other aliens that came down to try to capture the little uh, Stitch character, didn't care for them. It was, it was, the movie did not make me laugh, not one time, it wasn't funny. And the plot was, if you wanna get out of exile and jail, go back to Earth and get that abomination and bring it back because the other guy messed up and it got away. And that's your plot. And this alien is trying to, I guess, look like a dog because it sees how dogs look. And it has uh, normally four arms. It shrunk two of them in, pulled his ears out. The thing is ugly. You know how some things are so ugly as cute? This alien was never cute. It was ugly the whole time. I guess it can talk when it wants to. Um, and it's indestructible. Now, the one scene I did enjoy, there's a, a, a convoy of trucks that ran over this alien. It tore them truck tires and rims up. I said, this thing is tough. And um, it gets put into a, a dog shelter. And, um, okay, one part made me chuckle. When it was woke up and that shelter, all the dogs and animals were scared. It was over hovered in the corner. <laughs> And when the girl went in there to go look for animals, she couldn't see any dogs. They were all jumped up on the top of the gates and were hiding. <laughs> now, <laughs> that part did make me chuckle. That part was cool. After about the 56 minute mark, I looked down to see what time it was. I'm like, man, this movie is dragging. It could not hold my attention. I was doing the, oh man, what time? Uh, it just wasn't holding my attention. And this is where the movie got a little bit better. After an hour, it started to speed up a little bit. Not that I liked it better, it just had a little bit more action. Like my man Q Reviews would say, I'm perplexed. I don't know if I disliked this movie or liked it a little bit. Um, the end brought everything together like all Disney movies do. They talk about how family is very important in the Hawaiian way and and even though she was a total mess up, the older sister did deserve to be the legal guardian and her and the dude end up hooking up and the, what's his name, um, Bubbles, 
end up being a really cool guy. He was a hard ass throughout the movie, but at the end, he was making sure things were right. Now, I did like the little relationship talk at the end of the movie between Mr. Bubbles and the alien queen lady that came from another planet. That little bit of conversation they had about, you know, Area 51 and stuff, that was clever. I did enjoy that. Um, a lot of Elvis music in this movie um, didn't fit. It just, listening to Elvis, watching his cartoons running around, just didn't do it for me. But, I don't know, man. It might be beloved, but I would never watch this again. Lilo and Stitch. Sorry, Disney. You dropped the ball on this one. Yeah. Not feeling it that much. But Perez, as always, thank you for having me on you always get me to watch something that I would never watch. And um, it's kind of cool to broaden your horizon and venture down sometimes a dark hole to watch some of these damn movies. <laughs> Peace and love as always, brother. Until next time, when we collab again. Peace. A big thanks to Blacktastic for joining me here in this video. As usual, always a pleasure to have you in a video, man, and hear your opinion, even if it's completely different from mine. I recognize that this is a movie that I grew up with, that I played the video games for, that I watched the cartoon for, that I, you know, had merchandise for, which is why I have Stitch tattooed on my leg. This is a character that's always been super silly and over the top and cute and fun to me. So obviously we have some disagreements there. I also love the fact that they utilize Elvis music in this movie. And honestly, in my general opinion, I think that it actually works in this movie. I like a lot of those scenes and I actually used to own, I probably still do, it's probably in a box somewhere, um, a Stitch plushie of him dressed as Elvis as he is in the movie. So yeah, definitely a fan of the Elvis music in this movie and the way that they utilize it, especially little silly scenes like Stitch putting his finger on the record player or his nail and then opening his mouth and the music comes out. This movie is silly on every level. It knows what it is. It's not trying to be anything over the top and, and serious. And that's also, I think, something I love about this film is that there was a simplicity to the story being told here. They're not trying to go big and over the top. And sure, there are some big action moments near the end of the movie, but at its core, this is a story about family and you know people just trying to balance their life together and kind of rediscover this new life all together. So yeah, really love that story between Nani and Lilo and Stitch. And one of my favorite parts about the Stitch story is when he's reading a little book about a duckling that is kind of left out of his family and is kind of forgotten. And he ends up learning this, uh, this quote that's Ohana means family. And it says family uh, will never be left behind or forgotten. You know what I mean? Essentially, it's the general gist. And, you know, over the course of the film, he ends up repeating, repeating that line later on. And it's great to hear it in his stitch voice. It's very innocent voice that's also crazy and manic and can be insane, but at its core, it just wants to be loved. And I really just enjoyed that story. I never get tired of it. I love the animation around that. This movie makes me feel for the character of Stitch. Lilo is a bit annoying, I'm not gonna lie. She's a very over the top bratty character. So I can see how a lot of people who have never seen this film before did not grow up with it could watch this movie and think yeah i don't like that lilo character as for myself you know i have a nostalgic place in my heart for this movie i already know how lilo is so watching it i kind of see it from a different lens but you know she is annoying there's no getting around it a lot of times she does not deserve a lot of the uh, good treatment that she ends up getting she's a very misbehaved kid but as the movie progresses and we start to understand where she's maybe misunderstood i think that the movie overall does a good job of balancing a young bratty girl and a little alien monster and, and using the two of them to kind of mirror one another and realize, you know, where they can grow individually. And I think that that's such a really, really cool part of this movie as well. Oh, Hannah. Huh? Hey, get away from her. No, what did you say? Oh, Hannah means family. Family means nobody, nobody gets left behind. Oh, forgotten. As Blacktastic mentioned, you have Ving Rhames in here who plays the character of Agent Bubbles or Cobra Bubbles. And I just always loved his name and his role in here is hilarious. I think he's such a funny, subtle character. You know, he's playing this big, you know, muscular black guy with an ear piercing glasses. Looks like he's out of Men in Black. He's bald, he's in a suit. He looks like, you know, he'd kick your ass. And he's got this big, deep, rich black man voice. And you know, he's, his name is Bubbles. You know, I, I don't know what it is about that. I've just always loved that. And there's so many little subtle moments of humor with his character with just little sideways comments that he'd make that honestly have always sat with me and is definitely one of my favorite parts of this movie you know the hours are just not conducive to the challenges of raising a child uh, hey. 
I am so sorry about that. What yeah. is that thing? That's my puppy. Really? Thus far, you have been adrift in the sheltered harbor of my patience. And I think it goes without saying, overall, I enjoy this film. Is it the greatest film? Is this a cinematic masterpiece in terms of its narrative? No, but I really enjoy the art style. I like the look, the feel, the vibe, the humor. I like the way that they represented Hawaiian culture here, even if a lot of the cast is not Hawaiian, which... I will say, you know, obviously this was a bit of a different time when it comes to something like that. But overall, I like the look, the feel, the vibe. I like the character designs here. I like the relationships between the characters. There are little things here that I haven't mentioned, but you know, overall, this is a movie that just, you know, has little funny characters and some silly elements and some silly romantic interest and things like that. It's not something to take too super, super seriously, um, but it's not also a movie to kind of throw away in my opinion. This is a movie that has a lot of heart and has a lot of charm. And if you're looking for a movie that really hones in on the idea of family, and you've never seen Lilo and Stitch, it's definitely a movie that I do recommend. So a big thanks to Blacktastic for joining me here in this video. Always a pleasure to have you on, my friend. Always, always. And I'm looking forward to catching up on more of these collabs and older movie reviews. I've had a few of them on the back burner, but honestly, I just haven't been in the best mental state recently when it comes to YouTube. So I've been kind of slowing down my production to give myself time to breathe. But it, it's good to kind of sit here in front of the camera and talk about a movie once again that I grew up with. It's always great talking about the brand new movie that everybody's excited about, right? But a lot of times, those are are just first thoughts right and you haven't had time to sit on that movie and what I love about something like Lilo and Stitch is for whatever fault it may have whatever you know negative elements it may have whatever even great elements it has it what I really love about being able to review older movies is just being able to kind of reminisce not only on my thoughts on the movie but the nostalgia around it as I did at the beginning of this video so I appreciate all of you guys for watching if you made it this far into the video definitely want to hear what you guys have to say what do you think about Lilo and Stitch are you a fan of this franchise maybe what's your favorite thing that's a part of this franchise whether it's a movie the ride some of the merchandise the tv show a video game anything please leave down below in the comments hit that like button comment your thoughts subscribe for more videos and i'll see you beautiful people in the next video oh and blacktastic media's link is down below in the description go give them some love let them know i sent you Bye bye